Hmm. Is something wrong? No. I was merely thinking how it had been seven years, that's all. You mean since you became a lord and left Lenigus? I guess even someone like you can get homesick, huh? I am as prone to sentimentality as any other. Tell me, though. You too have a history with Lenigus. A traumatic one, no less. This trip will probably mean facing up to some difficult emotions. Doesn't that frighten you? Well... It is a place where I took the lives of countless people. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about it. But I can't keep running forever. The past is what it is. There's no changing that. But the future's what we make it. I see. Dohalim? Forgive me. I was wrong to pry. We have more pressing matters to address. Come back and speak to me when you finish looking around the ship. We'll be going to Lenigus soon. This must feel like a homecoming of sorts to you, huh? What was life on Lenigus like back then? You know, before you came to Dana. Let's just say, I don't have many happy memories. I've had thorns my whole life. For as long as I can remember. They called it treatment. But in truth, they were just using me as a guinea pig for their research. You mean, they experimented on you? That's right. All I was to them was a riddle to solve. They poked and prodded me, trying to figure out what triggered my thorns or changed the form they took. Day in and day out, every single day, one test after another. I'm still surprised they didn't try to dissect me. The look they gave me whenever one of them touched my skin. How could I forget it? Reeling from the pain, like I was a monster or something. Some existence, huh? A blight on any I touched, helplessly complicit in their pain. I thought things couldn't get any worse, but then they did. I started to have nightmares, visions of the coming apocalypse. <sighs> Is it any wonder I lacked a cheery disposition? Unable to so much as touch another soul. Loneliness was my best friend. Sure, I survived, but with the knowledge that one day I'd be swallowed up by oblivion. And that's when it hit me. If I was going to die, then it should mean something. If I have to sacrifice myself to save the world, so be it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you relive that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm in a much better place now. You say it's your destiny to die so that others can live, but why not the other way around? Why shouldn't we be the ones dying to save you? Uh, are you crazy? Why would you sacrifice your life for- That's exactly my point. Why should you have to give up your life just because you drew the short straw in the destiny stakes? How is that even right? It's that logic that's used to justify slavery, as if some of us were just meant to be sacrificed. This struggle was never about saving only ourselves. But that doesn't mean we have to give up our own lives to save everyone else's either. If we're doing this to protect people, if we're doing this to save the world from destruction, then that has to include saving each other as well. A world free of sacrifice. That's what you've been fighting for all along, isn't it? Not just me. We're in this together, remember? This fight is yours too, Xion. If we're going to win, everyone has to win. There can be no room for losers in this fight. Now I see it. The true nature of our struggle. A victory without losers. But that means that a Danon victory over Rena can't be the end. Do you think we can pull it off? You bet we can pull it off. We have to. It's the only hope we have of things ever changing. Yeah, you're right. No one's ever changed the future without aiming for the stars. We can do this together. Hey, Alfin, listen to this. So Law and I were just talking and... Hey, shut up! And what's got Law all flustered? Only that he's afraid of flying, the big baby. And after all that fuss he made about naming the ship, too. Hey, I never said I was scared. I just think it's, you know, a little unsettling how we're going to be cruising through space in a glorified tin can. That's all. It's a starship, dummy. That's what it's supposed to do. I don't think there's anything strange about it. Well, maybe you're the one with the problem, then. Guys, guys. I'm no expert, but I think we can trust Ren and technology. It got me to Dana in one piece, remember? Oh, 
Oh, that's a good point. If you think so, Alfin, it must be okay. Don't you agree, Law? Hard to argue with that, seeing how you hitched a ride in one of these things before, Alfin. It's just wrong, okay? You okay? Feeling airsick? Actually, now that you mention it, not at all. These starships are a remarkably smooth ride, all things considered. Nothing like being at sea, thank goodness. Glad to hear it. That device there caught your eye, huh? I was just wondering what it is. It looks big enough to fit a person inside of it. It's a healing pot. It fixes injuries and illnesses. Oh, you don't say. Well, that should definitely come in handy if any of us get injured while we're down there. <sighs> Alfin? Was it something I said? No, I... Uh, I was just thinking back to when I escaped Lenigus, that's all. What with the ceremony and losing control, I was a total mess. Nayori laid me inside here. So, you're saying you got in this thing straight after escaping? But that mean... You were inside for 300 years? Yes, it sounds crazy, I know. But don't even ask me why I stayed asleep all that time. That's definitely quite some lion, all right. But still, whether you meant to or not, I sure am glad that it's this century that you finally woke up in. What do you mean? With the amount of fighting we've done, we would have never made it this far without you. And not only that, but... Alfin, can you recall back to what it is that I said to you? Back when we left Menencia? About the dream of coexistence and needing to learn what it entailed? Of course. That's why you came with us, right? To learn what you couldn't at home. Even in that time, I was well aware that what I was living was a lie. But at the same time, I also felt really compelled to fulfill my brother's wishes. I'll always remember him fondly. But the coexistence we're fighting for isn't for him. It's for people now, and those still to come. The world's bigger than just men and Sia. My dream is for all Danans, wherever they might be, to be free. If I've learned anything on this journey, it's that. And the one who brought me along was you, Alfin. I'll forever be grateful to you. Well, we're not out of this forest just yet. You should probably save your thanks. At least, until we've dealt with the Red Woman. I know. But whatever we find when we get down there, I'm through looking the other way. Kisara... Probably getting a little ahead of myself, huh? Let's take things one step at a time. Is everyone about ready? We'll soon be making preparations to land. Before we do that, just what exactly should we expect when we get down there? Kisara has a point. Now that I think of it, I don't know the first thing about Lanigus. I'd like to hear more too. It's been centuries since I was last there, and they didn't exactly give me the grand tour. Very well. First and foremost, Lenigus is... was the base of operations in charge of the Crown Contest on Dana. Of course, it also happens to be a city in its own right, complete with its own independent society. Its social structure is based on a strict hierarchy. Put simply, the strength of an individual's astral arts carries great weight. Enough to determine someone's social rank, you mean? But astral arts are innate, right? So people's positions are fixed at birth. They can be honed with the right training, and there are admittedly other factors at play. But yes, that's basically the gist. As a result, family lines that churn out lords and their contenders wield disproportionate influence, and those lineages are treated as nobility. Those capable of only weak astral arts are effectively an underclass, denied the right to descend to Dana even if they wanted to. Still. Even the lowest rung on the Renan ladder is considered superior to being a Danon. Keep that in mind down there. Thanks for the warning. As a lord, Dohalim must have been pretty high up in the pecking order, right? What about you, Shion? Come on, you've seen her skill with astral arts. You really need to ask? <laughs> Fair point. On arts alone, you're right. I'd have been sitting pretty. But you're forgetting my thorns. They weren't exactly an invitation to high society. 
sorry. No, it's fine. It's refreshing to be around someone who says what they're thinking. Life's less complicated that way. Jeez, give backhanded compliments much? Wait a second. Are you? He is! Lost blushing! I am not! <laughs> of course, separating people into castes based on something arbitrary like arts is discrimination at its worst. As if such simplistic criteria could ever be a measure of someone's worth. So this red woman, are we expecting to find her on Lenegas? I would wager so. Lenegas is too deeply involved in all this to discard the possibility. Chances are she's also connected to the Renis Alma being stolen from us in Pelegian. If the Renis Alma is being used to exploit Dana, we need to take it back at all costs. That red woman's got a lot to answer for. Just as well I've got a ton of questions. We're about to land. The descent could be a little bumpy, so brace yourselves. If there are clues about your thorns out there, Shion, we'll find them. There's no one here. I wasn't expecting a welcome mat, but still... Lenegas's infrastructure is largely automated. Besides, people won't be expecting incoming traffic while the crown contest is still underway. Do you think anyone realizes that we're here? We may not have received a royal welcome, but I doubt our entrance went unnoticed. Don't let your guard down. I really hope we don't have to fight anybody while we're here. So now what? We've come all this way on a hunch that this red woman is here, right? And if we're lucky, the Renis Alma too. Any idea where we should start looking? There is an area of the city that is accessible only to the Sovereigns, known as the Forbidden Zone. That seems as good a place as any for us to start. Forbidden? What are they hiding? I don't know, hence my desire to find out. Fortunately, we just so happen to have a sovereign in our midst. In any case, changing the shape of a huge structure such as Lenegas would have required an immense source of power. Then you think that source might have been the Renis Alma? Precisely. Alfin said that he remembered the Renis Alma being used in the spirit channeling ceremony three centuries ago. Whatever the ceremony's purpose, if preparations are underway for it to be held once more, then the Renis Alma might be in the same place as last time, possibly together with the Red Woman. Hiding something of that worth in the residential quarters would only court trouble, in which case, it stands to reason we should be looking somewhere normally out of bounds. Is that it? Indeed. But it's been over 300 years since I was made a sovereign. You can't seriously think I'll be able to waltz right into the place after all this time. There's only one way to find out. If there's even a chance you can get us in, I say we give it a shot. Xion's right. Who knows? We might even find a clue to her thorns while we're at it. All right. It's not like we're swimming in leads, so let's try to track down the Forbidden Zone. Beyond that wall lies a city full of Renans. The capital city where Xion and Dohalim used to live, no less. Who knows what we'll find on the other side. Thinking about what could be lurking out here is giving me the heebie-jeebies. For such a loudmouth, you sure can be a worry word at times. Oh, I'm sorry. How stupid of me for wanting us to stay safe. Would you two children stop squabbling? Or do you want everyone to know we're here? <clears throat> so how many Renans actually live in this place? I couldn't tell you exactly, though not as many as you might expect. Machines and Zoogles take care of most of the city's basic functions. There's Zoogles out here too, huh? 
Sounds like we can't afford to let our guard down after all. What in the world? This being Renan territory, I was prepared for a lot of things to look different. But this? This is a bit more than I anticipated. The very foundations of the city have shifted. What could have caused this? When Lenigus changed shape, it must have had an effect on the interior too. Maybe when they sent the wedge down to Dana? But they wouldn't move around the places where people live. These are their homes, right? I would think the citizens themselves didn't have much say in the matter. Either way, locating the Forbidden Zone just became that much trickier. Dohalim? Is that you? Avakir, I'm glad to see you're well. So it is you! But why are you here? Shouldn't you be down on Dana participating in the crown contest? And these people! So you haven't heard what happened on Dana then? Heard what? Someone you know? An old friend. Hey, Dohalim. Don't tell me you've started keeping company with- They're with me. More importantly, what's happened here? Uh, I'm really not sure. The city's foundations began to shift without warning, and now everything looks like this. We're all waiting for the Sovereign to tell us what's happening, but so far... Avakir, listen to me. We're looking for the Forbidden Zone. Do you have any idea where we might find it? The Forbidden Zone? What business could you possibly have there? Trust me. The less you know, the better. <sighs> You're just the same as ever. <laughs> I wish I could help, but what with the changed topography, I can barely locate my own home let alone the Forbidden Zone. Very well. It looks like we'll have to find the way there ourselves. Have you seen Faria yet? No. I see. Well, nothing much has changed with her. If anything, she's probably even more... I can well imagine. Why did you come back? You know it can only result in pain for you both. I've no doubt of that. You really are the same as ever. Fine, I understand. Just don't say I didn't warn you. And take care of yourself. Okay, Do? So who's Faria? La! <sighs> if what Avakir said is true, it would seem the people of Lenigus are being kept in the dark about what's happening down on Dana. They seem to be just as clueless about what's going on up here in their own world. Despite the fact that it's actually here that the Wedge originally came from. We need more information. Let's talk to the citizens, see what we can find out. While we're at it, we can ask them about the Red Woman too. And don't forget about finding the way to the Forbidden Zone, either. Let's leave the talking to Xion. We can't have a bunch of Danans poking their noses around. Good idea. I think that's for the best. I shall assist. You sure? Being a lord on Lenigus has its advantages. Right. Then we'll leave it to you two. The Danans among us should probably keep our heads down. What if people freak out? I shall explain it away by saying I'm leading you. What are we, dogs? 
What could be so important? It's worth destroying people's livelihoods and homes in the process. It's just... unbelievable. Uprooting an entire city as if it were mere building blocks. Someone's got an awful lot of questions to answer. From how it looks, they must be siphoning off astral energy from Dana, and then sending it to Rena. But why do all this? What for? Surely they can't be using all that energy for the crown contest. Whatever their purpose, disrupting their siphoning process alone won't be sufficient. Not while we still don't know what their endgame is. He's right! We need to stop this from happening ever again! This Forbidden Zone might be where we find some answers, right? So what are we waiting for? Let's get moving! You heard him. We don't have time to stop and chat. Let's move. So, I've been wondering, do you think when Lenigus was built, it was even made with people living here in mind? What do you mean? Well, none of this happened by coincidence, right? They must have designed it to transform like this. But then, if they knew people were going to live here, you'd think they would have taken that into consideration, to avoid all this chaos. Ordinarily, yes. You'd think so. Trust me, as far as we were concerned, Lenigus was our home, nothing more. No one knew about all this. It makes you wonder whether the city was just built on as an afterthought. But if so, to what exactly? Sorry, that probably sounded weird, huh? <laughs> Not at all. Sometimes it takes an outsider's eye to help you notice what you've been missing all along. This place is a mystery, that's for sure. Something tells me we'll find answers where we're going, though. Yeah, you're right, Xion. I'm sure we will. Everything will be okay now. I know the basics of healing arts, but my skills pale in comparison. Oh dear me, what an unspeakable mess this has all become. Just look at the state of our city. Even the Zoogles have stopped heeding our commands. Whatever did we do to deserve this? You really have no clue what might have caused this? Would that I have. Alas, there was no warning, no prior decree. His Highness must have deemed it unnecessary for us to know. We have no choice but to grin and bear it. But do my eyes deceive me? Could I really be standing in the presence of his lordship, Dohalim of the House Ilkaris? I believed he was on Dana. Your eyes do not deceive you. It is I, one and the same. I have returned to fulfill a special duty, the details of which I cannot divulge. As your lordship wishes, first Lanagus mutates beyond recognition, now this unexpected visit, the Sovereign's plans are inscrutable indeed. The Ilkaris House has produced a great many lords over the centuries, I shall be praying for your victory in the latest crown contest. Your good wishes do me an honor. Your lordship! Oh, what a great honor it is to finally meet you! I descended to Dana during the last crown contest also. Alas, when the contender I was backing failed to clinch the title, I returned. I witnessed the deaths of so many slaves. Indeed. Sorry to interrupt, but we're looking for a woman dressed all in red. Have you seen anyone of that description? All red, eh? No, I can't say I remember anyone like that. I imagine she'd stand out somewhat, too. Yeah. What about down on Dana during the crown contest? You didn't see anyone like that hanging around the lord you were serving? What's with all these questions? I've never seen her, okay? Not recently or otherwise. Why do you want to find her anyway? Never mind. Forget I asked. Sorry to take up your time. Is everything okay? You look a little lost. Hmm? Oh, yes. I can't seem to find my way home, is all. I was just about to make my umpteenth attempt at a new route. I was hoping to head this way myself. The situation is a real pain, huh? 
I suppose the Sovereign knows best. I daren't stay here too long, though. A lower caste can only linger around these parts for so long before I outstay my welcome. I was hoping to avoid it, but maybe I'll have to go that way after all. You mean you know another way round? Lord Dohali Nilkaris! But how? Last I heard, you were in Dana competing in the crown contest. Yes, strange, isn't it? If you know another route, we'd be grateful if you could tell us. But, but of course. Please forgive me. There's a wall that sprung up ahead of here, with what looks to be an entrance in it. I thought maybe it was a passageway between the different quarters, but I've no way of knowing for sure. It's worth investigating, at least. I shall go and assess the situation. In the meantime, wait for me here. If it looks safe, I'll come and let you know. You'd really do that for me? A lord troubling himself for someone of my lowly status? Our lot in life is of little consequence. We are both Renan, first and foremost. Oh, why yes, my lord. Thank you. Well, we've canvassed the city for information. What do you think? No one has the faintest idea what's happened to the city after all. They haven't heard the news about the crown contest either. You'd think that info would easily find its way up here. Has it always been like that? Not to this extent. Which would indicate that something's suppressing the truth. That Lenicus is under some kind of control. Given everything that's happened to their city, the people here seem weirdly okay with it all. Yeah. That one guy even said Zugal had stopped listening to him. If that's true, these people are in big trouble. Everything that happens here is attributed to the Sovereign's will. It's the way people have been conditioned. Their belief runs deep. Nothing happens devoid of a reason. To them, it's all part of the Sovereign's grand plan. The Sovereign's plan. There is one thing I'm still not sure about. Just who is this person ruling over Lenegus? The Sovereign, of course. He rules from Rena while presiding over both Rena and Lenigus. Without the lords or anyone in the middle doing his dirty work? Isn't Rena at least the same size as Dana? That's a pretty big dominion for one person to rule over. I would have thought ruling Lenigus alone would be difficult enough. The points you make are valid, though I confess I'd never given it much thought before. Here, the Sovereign's total authority is as natural as night turning to day. Come to think of it, I know nothing of the nature of how Rena itself is. Oh. Shion, have you ever been. No, forgive me. Have you met or crossed paths with, or even heard of someone who's actually made a visit to the homeland? No, I haven't. Neither have I. In which case, I would imagine that. But no, surely not. Can it really be that no citizen of Lenicus has ever been there? Hold up, what are you getting at, Dohalim? Assuming what I believe to be correct, it's possible that no one on Lenigus has ever laid eyes on the actual Renan homeworld itself. No one but the Sovereign, that is. But what about trade and communication? There's got to be a flow back and forth, surely. Not if the Sovereign is imposing his will on Lenigus single-handedly. It could be a one-way street. But I thought you said that the Sovereign's all the way over on Rena. If that's the case, can he really rule directly over Lenigus from so far away? What if something were to happen to the city, like now? I'm beginning to wonder what the nature of this Sovereign even is. Alfin said he was forced into the role, right? Just before the ceremony. But Sovereign is also the title given to the almighty Renin ruler. So which one is it? Whoever wins the crown contest inherits the throne from his or her predecessor before becoming ruler over all of Rena and Lenigus. Thereafter, that individual is known as the Sovereign. Though, it would appear that the current ruler has gone silent. As for how Volron factors into all this, at this point, I no longer know what to believe. Three centuries ago, I became the Sovereign here on Lenigus. No, not just became, I was forced to. Me, a Danon. Three hundred years later, we cross paths with Volron, who also bears the Sovereign's crest. That's not the only thing we have in common. We both became Sovereign without winning the Crown Contest. Do you think Volron was made Sovereign for the same reason? Because of that ceremony? 
I can't say for sure, but it certainly sounds like it. But that would mean that two sovereigns would need to exist at any one time. One whose job it is to rule, and the other for ceremonial purposes. We never did see Volron's body back in Ganeth Haros. Is a new ceremony underway with Volron at its center this time? Could that be what's causing all this strange activity here? Wait a second. You don't think Volron and the Red Woman are working together, do you? The ceremony can't go forward without the Renis Alma. The same one that the Red Woman stole. There's something else the ceremony needs. A maiden. And unless there's another one out there aside from me... Questions, questions, and yet more questions. Ones that it seems will remain unanswered until we can establish the Sovereign's identity. If the Forbidden Zone really is off-limits to everyone but the Sovereign, that seems as good a place as any to start. For the sake of liberating Dana, too. Then it's decided. That's where we need to go. One of the citizens mentioned a passage that she thought might lead to another section of the city. It could point us in the right direction. Let's go find it! I didn't realize Renan suppressed their own kind, too. And yet, weirdly, none of them seem to mind. Am I the only one who finds that strange? It is the way things have always been, so no one thinks to question it. You have experience in that regard yourself, do you not? Unquestioning acceptance of your own servitude. Yeah, that sounds about right. Even so, the quality of life here seems much higher than any Danon city we visited. I used to think it was impossible to build an ideal society without wealth. But I suppose having it doesn't always mean people are treated fairly, either. More to the point, not a single citizen seems to have even heard of the Red Woman. What if she's not here? What if it turns out we're looking in the wrong place entirely? It's still too early to say anything for sure. For all we know, she might be able to blend in, move around unnoticed. I say we hold off judgment until we've exhausted every avenue. Tell me, Dohalim, has that skill of yours got a name? And what skill would this be, pray tell? You know, when you're talking to people around town. The way they suddenly become putty in your hands. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. I do. It's called friendly intimidation. Look imposing and speak in a deep, booming voice, and presto, you'll have people wrapped around your finger in no time. I would never stoop to such scandalous tricks. Any feelings of intimidation are solely in the eye of the beholder. So there is a knack to it! How do you learn it? Can anyone do it? Now you've got me curious. Is there special training to master? Hmm, let's see. An obsession with being elegant is a must. Oh, and it helps to be old-fashioned, too. Bonus points if you speak in a way no one can understand. If you've a bone to pick with me, it'd be quicker to just come out and say it. What? They look up to you, that's all. I'm just helping them along. Hey! What's got into Alvin and Law all of a sudden? I can barely understand a word they're saying. And what's with the weird poses? Was it something they ate? I hope you're willing to take the blame for this one. I wasn't expecting them to take me so seriously. I'll go and have a word with them. With nobody left to run the show, I wonder what the people here are supposed to do. I mean, their sovereigns up on the Renin homeworld, and all their lords were sent to Dana. But Dohalim was a lord, right? Only current acting lords have power. Renin society is quite strict about such matters. Even if the other lords were still around, I doubt they'd be able to do much about the situation. I wonder what they'd think if they were here to see Lenegas now. Balsif, Canabelt, Almadria, and Volron. Now that I think of it, aside from Dohalim, we know next to nothing about the other lords. Well, yeah, why would we? To us Danans, they were just enemies we needed to overthrow. Nothing more. I know. But seeing Renans in their own city, going about their day-to-day -day lives, it gets you thinking. It feels strange to imagine the lords living here too, you mean? Yeah, a little. If you're that curious about them, why not try inquiring with some of the locals? Every lord in their household has their share of supporters here on Lenegas. And luckily for us, the people here are unaware of the events on Dana, which means they should be more inclined to talk to us. Hmm?
Yes! Yes! Balsef had it in him to care about someone other than himself? Really? It's possible. A change in position can do much to alter one's perspective. So even he might have had something he wanted to protect. <laughs> I guess she intended to spread it throughout all of Lenigus then. Good thing the lines were down so she couldn't. It almost sounded like she was praising them too. Maybe there was more to the guy than at first glance. I shall refrain from commenting. Hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ganabelt was so horrible to people. Yet he was invested in helping Rena succeed. Doesn't that seem just a little inconsistent? I'm perhaps biased in this matter, I admit. However, in my mind, while all lords vie to become the next sovereign, they're also meant to serve as guardians of all of Rena. It seems like Ganabelt also had people he cared about until the very end. So why couldn't he extend that to us Danins? This area doesn't look as badly damaged as that other district we went through. Indeed. The effects of Lenegus's transformation appear to be less pronounced here. Or, viewed another way, this area was simply luckier. Pardon me. I guess her willingness to stoop to any low came from a survival of the fittest worldview. And some people here not only shared her belief, but championed it as morally right, too. That doesn't make it true. Too bad they couldn't see through her. Yeah. Ridiculous. Okay. Seems like the people on Lenegus don't really know much about Volron either. I remember being quite surprised when the Lord of Ganeth Harrows changed so abruptly. Didn't you have any doubts that something suspicious was going on? On the contrary. Remember, we Renans are raised to accept everything at face value. When you think about it, the families of Renan lords must see them differently than the rest of us. Yeah, despite the brutality they're known for. They must have had a lot on their shoulders. 
carrying all the weight and responsibilities of Renan society. Renans live in a world where strength and power determine their position in the social hierarchy, so they tend to grow up fiercely competitive. But their loyalty to their people is also strong. It's what brings them together against outside forces, and nothing exemplifies that more than the Lords. That's what makes them the guardians of all of Renna, so to speak. Right. It's the same reason Balsif hated my guts, and Ganabelt went after you. Because we're threats to Renna. Guess that makes you an even bigger oddball than we thought. So, Alfin, have you gained anything from all of this? Yeah. I think it's made me realize that the Lords were all people, too. Balsif and the others? They all had their own circumstances to deal with as they went through life. Yeah, but still, just because they had loved ones in their lives doesn't mean... I know. What they did was horrible. I'm not trying to dispute that. But at the same time, they weren't incomprehensible monsters either. They were individuals, just like the rest of us. So I guess what I'm trying to say is... You're saying that they weren't bad because they were Renans, or because they were terrible monsters. Even if they did terrible things, they were still just people. Renwell, am I wrong? Not at all. Being a Danon doesn't make you a good person. And being a Renan doesn't make you a bad one. I think that's something we've all seen. Xion and Dohalim definitely make a good case for it. And I'm going to keep doing my best to make sure I earn that trust. As a fellow human being above all else. There's something I just don't get. What is it? The crown contest itself has always gone ahead as planned, right? In which case, the current Sovereign of Rena should be whoever it was that won the previous contest. Yeah, that makes sense. So, who was it then? Hanfreaked Milgroth, the former Lord of Cislodia, if memory serves. So then this Hanfreaked Wachimakalim, he's the current ruler of Rena? The last I heard, yes. Though, admittedly, I haven't actually seen him since the end of the previous contest. You're saying that ever since becoming Sovereign, he's never actually shown himself on Lenegus? I guess over Holocom, maybe, but not in the flesh. Same thing goes for the Sovereign that came before him. Now that you mention it, I don't recall anyone ever visiting Lenegus from the Motherland, Sovereign or otherwise. And that never struck you as a little bit... odd? <sighs> when you live here, it's as if you're conditioned not to notice all these strange quirks and discrepancies. The question is then, by whom? And to what end? A new Renis Alma is supposedly created to coincide with every crown contest, meaning each victor is awarded their very own. In other words, if that's true, there should be as many of the things out there as there have been contests. True, but... Going on what we witnessed in Pelegian, it didn't look like the sort of thing that could be made to order. But if even the victor's speeches have been part of some grand deception, then where are they? <sighs> Quite frankly, I'm not even sure what to believe anymore. You and me both. Though we are Renan by blood, neither of us even knew that such a thing as a Dark Master core existed, remember? With any luck, the Forbidden Zone might give us some answers. No use standing around here chatting about it, then. Let's get a move on. Doe? Faria. Faria? Isn't that the person that Avakir guy was- Shh. But why are you here? Wait, don't tell me you've given up on the crown contest and come crawling back home from Dana already. Nothing to say? Even though you were willing to kill Tarnigan to secure your position as Lord, you still... Kill? I'm here to take care of something. If you wish to continue this conversation, I only ask that you wait until I'm finished. Oh, of course. You always did prefer to take the coward's way out. Even after seven years and living on that Danon rock, you haven't changed one bit. But let me tell you, I haven't changed either. Not a day's gone by the past seven years that I haven't hated you! If killing me will bring you peace, then so be it. <laughs> Doha! 
Salim, what the hell are you saying? First, I have business to take care of. If it's vengeance you seek, I will grant you it. But you must wait. My sins are legion. Let me finish what I came to do. Then you have my word. I will let you do whatever brings you peace. Sure, that's it. Run away like always. You don't even have the courage to die. No wonder you leave it to someone else. You're just a coward! Dohalim. I apologize that you had to witness that. Is it true? What she said about you killing someone? Each of us have our pasts. I am no exception. Before, back in Menencia, you mentioned having taken a friend's life over the throne. Is that what she meant? The mistakes I made there were not my first, and may not be my last. I will say no more. Did you mean what you said? About letting her take your life if she wanted to? She has more right to my life than anyone. But you can't just... Whatever happens, I have sworn to put an end to the Crown Contest, and to ensure continued coexistence in Menencia. I have no intention of expiring before I do so. There are far too many questions I still seek answers to. Besides, you have just as much reason to kill me as she does. <laughs> Dohalim! Forgive me. Some things are best left unsaid. Wow, this place is beautiful! Yeah, it must be some sort of rest and leisure area for the locals. You think? Man, these Renin sure know how to live it up, don't they? <sighs> it, is something the matter, Dohalim? Before I went down to Dana, my friends and I, we... We used to gather at this very spot and play music together. Avakir, Faria, and Tarnigan. <laughs> that was a lifetime ago now. Tarnigan. He was the one that Faria mentioned, right? He was once my dearest, closest friend. <sighs> as well as Faria's betrothed. <sighs> Despite Faria's lower class upbringing, she possesses a tremendous talent for music. Entranced by her playing, I helped her overcome her sense of inferiority and introduced her to Tarnigan and Avakir. It was a time of great joy. Four people bound only by their love of music, with no care for social standing. Only the next song, the next melody. A friendship based on mutual respect, and a society where everyone is a prisoner to their social class. You really are different, Dohalim. I suppose it's natural you would see it as strange. I would have, once. Now, I think the idea of breaking away from society's constraints and choosing your friends based solely on affection is something beautiful that's worth cherishing. Besides, it was that way of looking at the world that laid the foundations for coexistence in Menencia. Your praise does me too great an honor. I was merely following the wishes of my own heart. And even then, it only lasted until the crown contest began. After that, Tarnigan and I became fierce competitors for the position of Lord. Tarnigan had fallen for Faria. By becoming Lord, he aimed to wrest her from her humble origins and raise her to the highest echelons of society. But fate was not so benevolent. What happened? Tarnigan was no match for me in combat. 
on a level playing field, he wouldn't have stood a chance. But he was desperate and low on options, and he couldn't stand the thought of defeat. You mean he resorted to dirty tactics to try to win, right? But then why does Faria think... Wait, don't tell me she doesn't know. How could I tell her? Combined with the trauma of losing her beloved, and by her friend's hand, no less. She would have been devastated. So instead you let her go on hating you, so she could use that hate as a crutch for her grief? <laughs> That's not the same as running away, though. It is exactly the same. Unable to face the loss of my friend and the burden of my duty, instead I decried my fate and looked away from what I'd done. As for what happened after, that you already know. But if you hadn't become Lord, Menencia wouldn't be what it is now. The Danans there would still be suffering under Renan oppression like before. <sighs> Shion's right. What other lord would have treated me as you did? Anyone else and I would have been dead long ago. You've saved so many people, Dohalim. You saved me. It's thanks to you that I'm here today. So, try not to blame yourself. The burden you've placed on your own shoulders is too much for anyone to bear. Frank as always. But I shall do my best to heed your advice. Do you think he'll be all right? Yeah, I think so. He's got Kisara. It's important to have someone like that. I didn't realize how difficult it is just to be there for someone. Sometimes just knowing someone's on your side can be enough. And he knows, Xion. I promise he does. I hope you're right. Alfin. Yeah? I never appreciated until recently just how much you were always there to support me. It goes both ways. You've helped me keep going more times than I can count. Maybe, but I still wanted to say thank you. I see a medic and supply officer over there. If they know you're with me, they'll likely offer their assistance. Damn it! Lenigus soldiers! Any way we can avoid fighting them? That all depends on them. Whatever happens, be you ready. Well, so much for them not wanting to fight. Ho! Oh. I am Lord Dohalim of Elder Menencia. I command you. The rest of the city must be erased. No. Have they been brainwashed too? Brainwashed or not. If they want to fight, they've got one. Smash to pieces! Those soldiers seem different from the citizens we've come across so far. Yeah. They weren't big talkers, that's for sure. They just attacked without warning. They weren't in the least bit phased by Dohalim's presence, either. Indeed. They seemed to recognize us as enemies, nothing more. And yet, traditionally, Lenigus hasn't been high on threats. A few frenzied zoogles during experiments here and there, but not much else. Their glazed-over eyes reminded me of the soldiers and slaves we met back in Ganeth Haros. The ones in blind devotion to Volron. I've never seen anything like that here on Lenigus before. Maybe someone doesn't want us here, and the soldiers are their way of letting us know. What with the Red Woman, the Sovereign, and Volron, we're starting to develop quite the growing list of adversaries. At least we'll know to keep our wits about us. That enemy looks strong. I bet it'll be worth. I've got a Ran really bad feeling about this. Too slow. Not in your dreams! Glacier! You you're Those soldiers don't seem to have any qualms about attacking on sight. Is someone making them stand guard over the Forbidden Zone? Ow! 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 Ow!
This must be it. The entrance to the Forbidden Zone. But it's just a wall. How do we get through? Whoa, we? I thought this was Sovereigns only. Alfin. Interesting. If Alfin's presence still opens the way, it would seem the Sovereign of three centuries ago and now are considered one and the same. What? What the...? Alfin. You again. Tomorrow's the spirit channeling ceremony. We'll finally play our parts as the sovereign and maiden. How have you been feeling? What am I sovereign of? Shuffled from lab to lab, always treated like an experiment. Whenever they look at me, all they see is a Danon. I don't even know what their precious ceremony's for, let alone what they're going to force me to do as the sovereign. Tell me, if we're both in the same boat, why do you seem so calm right now? No choice. Becoming the Maiden's not something I wanted for myself. But they... They said Rena's prosperity depended on it. How could I say no after that? Still, as a Renan, at least you got to decide. Good for you. Meanwhile, I was taken from my homeland. You aren't the captive one here. It isn't right what they did to you. And I'm sorry for what it's worth. When this is over... I swear I'll help you get home. I can't do this alone. One more day. How could I say no to that? It's not like I have any choice in the matter anyway. So, what's your name? It's Naori. Naori Imeris. Try to remember this time. You don't act like them. Like the other Renans, I mean. How come you treat me like a person? Because you are. It's true we come from different worlds. But neither one of us asked to be here right now. In that sense, you and I are much the same. We couldn't do this. We wouldn't be able to talk to each other as people. If we didn't see the humanity in each other. So I suppose the question you should be asking is, why wouldn't I treat you like one? You're not like the others. Maybe they're not like me. Here's what we'll do. We give them their damn ceremony. You get me to Dana. That'll be the end of it. I'm taking you at your word on this. I'm trusting you, not them. Nayori. What the hell just happened? That vision. Did everyone else see it too? That person Alvin was speaking to. She looked exactly like Shion. It was Naori. Naori Imeris. Isn't that right? <sighs> yeah, that's right. She really does look like Shion. I'm beginning to see why Alvin was so confused. That's all very well and fine, but what did we just witness exactly? It was too real to be a mere hallucination. 
It was a conversation we had 300 years ago, the night before the ceremony. You mean all of that really happened? We just saw an episode straight out of your past? But how is that even possible? Unless... Could this be the Red Woman's handiwork too? No, I don't think so. Why not? You guys didn't feel it? The moment the entrance opened, it was like a stream of Dan and Astral energy rushing over us. I felt it too. And not for the first time either. It was the same sensation as back inside the wedge. That would make sense. After all, vast amounts of Dana's astral energy were being siphoned and sent up here to Lenigus. For all we know, perhaps we're close to the spot where all that energy was stored. So you think it might have been the energy itself that was responsible for that vision we just saw? But how? And why? We have no way of knowing. Maybe it's not even as deliberate as all that. <sighs> Shion, you okay? Yeah. It was all just a little sudden. That's all. So that was my ancestor, huh? It was like looking into a mirror. Yeah, there certainly is a resemblance. What about you? How are you holding up? Me? Even putting aside the question of where that vision came from, it's likely we'll see more of those. Reliving painful episodes from your past. Do you think you can handle it? I can't just pretend like the past never happened. Besides, if it helps us uncover the truth of what that ceremony really was, it might also lead to answers about your thorns. Alfin. That's not all. This whole time, we've been fighting to free Dana from the Renans. But now that we're here, it seems those same Renans might have it just as bad. I'd like to liberate them too if I can. Which is just another reason I can't afford to shield my eyes from the truth. Whether you're on Dana or somewhere else, you always stay the same. Your indignation and righteous passion, your desire to free and protect, they're all hardwired into you. Not that I'm complaining. Come on, let's bust this thing wide open. Nobody's here. Stay sharp. After that last illusion, there's no telling what could happen in here. Faria, how did you get in here? Wait, something about her isn't right. What's wrong with her? She doesn't even seem to know where she is. Yeah, you're right. She looks just like the soldiers we encountered outside. Summoning? But that's preposterous. She never had that kind of power when- We can talk later. Here it comes! What? I've never known Claudia to control symbols like that before. How about with a stone that looks suspiciously like a master core? What the? Where did she get her hands on that? First we handle the Zubal. Then we get some answers. Not in your for the weak point. All yours, Kisara! Grant me the strength! The the I'll finish you here and now! Thank you! Now I'm my watch! Can't get out of this! Won't this is one tough cookie! Not too much longer, Ethan! Don't let up till it's all over! Hurry, man! Eat this! Take this! On your way! Take this! Can't get out of this! Confiscated! Watch it! Magnus and Meteor! Strike! I'm rushing to mess with me! Eagle Challenge Here goes. Oh. 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 Now. Alvin, this ends now. Consider yourself finished.
Now it's just her! Faria! Can you hear me? Faria! <laughs> she's preparing another summoning! The art she's casting is way too powerful to control. At this rate, her body won't be able to take much more. <laughs> Dohali! <laughs> Forgive me. Man, I thought we were goners. Everything okay? Yes. She's only unconscious. Not her. I meant you. Shion, please. Can you treat her? I can try, but I can't promise she'll be back to her real self when she wakes up. All I can do is heal her physically. We're not even supposed to be in here. Maybe it'd be better if we moved her to somewhere a little safer. Don't you think? In that case... I'll take her off your hands. You? Avakir, what are you doing here? I was curious what you were up to, so I took the liberty of following you to find out. I overheard what you said about Tarnigan, about how he really died. I'm sorry, I had no idea. And you believed me? What makes you so sure I wasn't lying? I like to think I know you a little better than that, Doh Halim. Give me some credit. Uh. I'll take Faria. Leave her with me. I know better than to ask what you're up to. But whatever it is, I hope it all works out. Thank you. He seems like a good friend. He hasn't changed. He never was one to stand out. Instead, he was always hanging back, worrying about everyone else. As for Faria, it's always the closest to me who get hurt. You don't seriously blame yourself for what happened to her, do you? Somebody got to her, to strike back at me. Someone who knew me well enough to know that I'd hesitate to fight back. And the same goes for you as well. Neither you nor Faria would have lost loved ones, if it wasn't for me. You're wrong. Kalzalik was the one who killed my brother, under orders from Almadria. As for Tarnagan, if it weren't for the crown contest, he'd still be alive. That and the whole damn hierarchy that makes it possible. But that's why we're fighting. To put an end to this whole messed up system that treats people as expendable. Indeed. Reading society of this blight is really the only way I know how to atone for my sins. You can't atone, Dohalim. <laughs> I know it hurts to hear, but those people are dead. No amount of soul-searching or trying to make amends is going to change that. Forgiveness, acceptance, those ships have sailed. So I just forget the harm I caused? No, the opposite, in fact. You remember. You never forget. You keep it in your heart always. And then you go on living. Not for those already passed, but for those still alive. For those still alive? Kisara's right. So long as we've still got breath in our bodies, we can make a difference in the lives of others. Lives being the operative word. That's what living's all about. Being able to still make a difference. Punishing yourself for the past won't make the pain of your conscience go away. Only fixing the problem in its stead. Is that what you're saying? That's right. You have to live for tomorrow, Dohalim, not for yesterday. And not only that, you need to live for yourself and for the change that you still can be. <sighs> I shall try. Don't forget, we've still got a mystery to solve. The Forbidden Zone, remember? Shion. Huh? Thank you. You have my deepest gratitude for what you did for Faria. Glad to be of service. I'm glad we could stop Faria without hurting her. You all did much for her as well. I'm most grateful. Oh, shucks. We're on the same team, right? Let's move on. Do you think Faria was really being controlled by someone? Certainly seemed that way. The question is, who? The Red Woman? The same person who's behind all of this, I'll bet. Whoever that is. Brainwashed or otherwise, the feelings of resentment she holds towards me are real. Someone used her because they knew we'd hold back. 
If that's not playing dirty, I don't know what is. It does tell us one thing, at least. Someone here in Lenegas is watching us. Someone who means us harm. There's no question. That attack was meant for us alone. By someone capable of getting inside a person and manipulating them like a weapon. We need to find whoever it is, fast. <laughs> what is it, Rinwell? Do you hear something again? Yeah. It's that voice. The will of Dana's astral energy. What? There's so much astral energy. But where's it all coming from? It's almost like... it's alive. That was the spirit channeling ceremony just now. No, it was more than that. What the hell was that? It felt like everything was on the brink of... Like the whole world was seconds from... Oblivion. It's the same vision as the one my thorns show me. A vision of impenetrable darkness that swallows up us and everything else. An empty void. A nothing so complete and dominating that there aren't even words to describe it. The end of time. The visions of the apocalypse you've been seeing. If I'd known how bad they were, I... Uh. So, everything we just saw, those were Nayori's memories, right? That's right. It was as if her innermost thoughts were speaking directly to us. At least I know they weren't mine. That power flowing into her... It reminds me of Xion's thorns. If they're what's responsible for all these visions she's been having, then maybe... Maybe my thorns are made from that same astral energy? If that is the case... We just found the missing link between your thorns and what happened here three centuries ago. No, more than a link. Perhaps even the very heart of the matter. I've never felt astral energy so powerful. What was that? If it's the same energy your thorns are made of, it must be dark astral energy, right? And isn't that something only Renans have? Correct. Dark astral energy is possessed by Renans alone. And when enough astral energy gathers together, it develops its own form of sentience. 
If so, maybe that complete oblivion is exactly what the Renan Astral Energy's will is wishing for. But why? I don't know. Will can be a pretty vague thing to nail down. It's more of a feeling, just like the will of Dana. But the will of Dana is made up of astral energy too, right? And if that's what's been showing us these visions... I don't know, should we really be getting so involved with this thing? Dana's will would never want oblivion! But you can't say that for sure! Cut it out, you two. Squabbling over theories will get us nowhere. <sighs> Let's keep moving. If it's Dana's will showing us these memories, then I'm as clueless about its motives as any one of us. But if it could lead us to the truth, then I want to find out more. Shion's right. All we can do is keep going. If these really are Naori's memories we're watching, there could be truths in them I was never aware of. And I think... They may be the kinds of truths I need to confront if we're going to keep fighting. I'm sorry about what I said earlier. Come on, let's go. Finally, we begin to understand what the thorns are. Yes, and their source. A ceremony that occurred three centuries ago. But we still don't know how to get rid of them. I just hope we can find a way. That vision we saw. It was as if it was meant specifically for us. What do you make of it? Do you still think the will of Dana might be involved somehow? Maybe it's trying to tell us something. But what? Well, it could be supernatural. You know, like seeing dead people, messages from beyond the grave, ghost-type stuff. That that's your grand theory? That we're being haunted? Come on, Law. Wait. He might be closer to the mark than you think. What if a person's thoughts and deeds were to somehow become indelibly etched into the ether of a place? And what if those with a connection could then somehow pick up on them? You think that's what it was? Some kind of message someone left here for us? I am merely entertaining the possibility. Whether it was Dana's will, or somehow connected to the Sovereign and Maiden's powers, I do not know. Okay, back up a sec. You're saying that if a place is full of enough astral energy, it can somehow show us events that happened centuries ago? More to the point, how does that much astral energy gather in one place anyway? Seems unlikely it happened naturally. Whatever it was, it survived here intact for 300 years. Whoever left it for us, the strength of their intent is beyond doubt. The strength of their intent? <sighs> Soon. We might very well learn the truth behind Shion's thorns. As well as my own past, I have to be ready to face anything. Whatever happens, I'm determined to save Shion and Dana. Nothing I learn can change that. Hold up, you guys. What is it? I want to look through that room over there. I'm curious what we'll find. That's the room you visited in your past, right? Sure. We can check it out. This looks like some kind of research facility. A laboratory secreted away in the Forbidden Zone. Why am I past being surprised at this point? Looks pretty deserted. Let's check it out. It might give us a new lead. For the people of Lenegas, the Forbidden Zone is the stuff of dreams. Yet here I am, standing within its hallowed halls. It's off-limits even for lords, then? Talk about an exclusive club. Being exclusive is one thing, but how many important facilities let in only the Sovereign? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Strange doesn't cover it. If it was only one room, maybe. But a place on this scale? How do they keep it from falling into ruin? Whoever the Sovereign is, they can't manage the upkeep of this whole place themselves. Did no one ever talk about it when you were growing up? No, not that I can remember. Then again, Sovereigns and Forbidden Zones weren't exactly breakfast table conversations. The Forbidden Zone is a hallowed place, at one with the Sovereign's authority. 
grounds of the one true ruler who presides over all Renans. That is what we believed this place to be. No, what we were made to believe it was. But now, it is finally time to discover this area's true purpose, and why it was kept hidden behind the scenes for so long. Hmm, I think I can make this work. Well, can you make head or tail of it? These are experiment records, by the looks of it. Reams of them, dating back hundreds of years. Let's see. A composite being capable of controlling Danon astral energy, so as to convert its molecular and elemental makeup. The creation of a governing central figure, taking the form of a Danon. Codename Sovereign. Sovereign? Wait, there's more. Research into utilizing force field crystals for the purpose of stable astral energy containment. That must be the master course. With all this raw data, there's bound to be records here somewhere about the Maiden and the Lords, too. About the Lords? Why would they be on there? Think about it. The Lord's crests are clearly of a piece with those of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. Not to mention the fact that the contenders to the Crown are selected from otherwise regular Renan citizens. In other words, it may be that all Renans are unwittingly being made subject to some kind of... grand scheme. What about the Sovereign? Does it say anything else? Where do I start? All I've read so far is the headlines. There's so much here. To sift through all of it would require specialized... Wait. What is it? Did you find something? It's a list of names. With the title, Test Subjects, Sovereign. It's your call. Read it. There must be dozens of test subjects listed here. Hundreds even. All of them failures. Wait. I think I've found one that was successful. Test subject number 1273. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Alphen. <sighs> they re-engineered me. Right here in this lab. Alphen. It's fine, really. What about the others? Was I the only one? Test subject number 10105. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name... Volron. Volron? But that means... She's only sovereign because someone made him that way, too. He's the last one. In three centuries worth of records, you and Volron are the only two subjects on whom the experiment was a success. <laughs> but what about the winners of the crown contests? Does this mean that none of them were ever crowned sovereign after all? Upon victory, the Sovereign shall return to Rena and rule over Rena and Lenegus combined. When a new Sovereign is decided, the outgoing Monarch shall relinquish their post and live out the rest of their days on Rena. So we were told. But according to these records, there have only ever been two Sovereigns, neither of whom had anything to do with the Crown Contest. It's all lies, including the part about the Sovereign residing in Rena. The Crown Contest was never about deciding a new ruler. It must always have been devised for some other purpose. But even supposing that's true, someone must have been in charge for the past three centuries, right? If it wasn't the Sovereign, then who was it? Crown Contests have been held this whole time, 
in spite of the fact that there was already a sovereign. Me. Meaning that for the past 300 years, someone out there has to have been maintaining that lie. The same person I'm willing to bet is behind all this. The Red Woman? It's possible. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's the mastermind behind this scheme. She could be working for someone else. Someone back on the Renan homeworld. Either way, it's fair to say she's definitely involved somehow. What about the data records? Is there no other information that could help us? Not that I can see. Just file upon file of experiment results. There's nothing here about who's behind all this, or what their endgame is, unfortunately. I've barely managed to scratch the surface, mind you. You won't be able to read through it all, but you're welcome to take a look through what you can, while we're here. I'll do that. But this is where Alfin became the Sovereign. And Volron as well. Significant... Yes. Hey! It looks like the terminals in here turned on too! We should look through them. They might contain valuable information. Only two Sovereigns. In over 300 years. So why has the experiment only succeeded twice in all this time? And if that's the case, why keep on doing it? Was there really no other way? Or could there be some other reason? Dohalim. <laughs> Forgive me. Alfin. I'm fine. I'm just a little shaken, that's all. I knew what I was already, so it's not like it's a surprise or anything. But it's strange. I've got all this rage inside of me, but I don't even know who it's for. I'm scared that I'll put a face to it, just to have someone to blame. If that were to happen, then I... No. Then we'd help you fight it, before you ever got that far. <sighs> wouldn't we, everyone? Yeah. We wouldn't just sit by and watch you spiral out of control. That's right. No good can come from being consumed by hatred. If you ever start to lose your way, you can count on us to guide you back. To remind you where home is. And I would be happy to lend an attentive ear, should you ever have need. Thank you, everyone. I think I'll be okay now.
Mayori, I... I... Don't talk. I have to do this. I gave you my word that I'd help you return to Dana. The next time you open your eyes, you'll be home. But you... My place is here with my people. I still have a duty to fulfill. I'm sorry for what you've endured. Renan never should have dragged you into this. It's not your burden to bear. But... The mask contains a sedative. It should keep your mind from tearing itself apart any further. Let yourself go to sleep. This should help with the pain. Time to go, Elfin. Farewell. Mayori. His injuries are worse than I thought. Short-term treatment isn't going to cut it. I'll have to switch the healing pod to long-term hibernation mode. The chance of surviving hibernation's less than 10%? And worse, long-term use of the mask carries a high risk of damaging his mind and nervous system. But... The... If I don't head back, Lenigus will be nothing but ashes, and this starship along with it. I don't know if I can fulfill my promise to you, Alfin. But if... If doing this will grant you even the slightest chance, I have to try. I hope it's enough. Please, live for me, Alfin. That vision. It must have been from when Naori helped Alfin escape Lenigus. She sure went above and beyond the call of duty. Even with Lenigus crumbling down around her, she chose to stay put with her people. So that's why you lost your memories and sense of pain, and why you were asleep for that whole time. It was all the result of one agonizing decision Naori made to save your life. Yeah. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't even be alive today. I owe her everything. More than I could ever hope to repay. Now that you know how she felt, how do you plan on honoring her wishes? She kept her promise. If the Renan people she fought so desperately to protect are at risk from a malevolent force, then I owe it to her to carry on her fight. Naori was the one who put that mask on me, and made me Iron Mask. She did it to prevent your soul from tearing itself apart. She knew you might lose your memories and sense of pain as a result. But more than anything, she wanted you to survive. And you did. This place. We've seen this in one of Naori's memories. Of course. After 300 years, this is where it was held. The spirit channeling ceremony. This is where the Renis Alma was. So this is the place where you and Naori... The Renis Alma isn't here now. Nor is the Red Woman, it seems. I know it's difficult, Alfin. But there will be time to dwell on the past later. For now, we need to keep moving. Come on. What is this? Is it the work of Dana's will again? 
It's been a year since the ceremony. That day, I shut away inside of myself the power that caused Elfin to lose control. Since then, my visions of the future have grown more and more fearsome. Is this another memory? No, it's different this time. It's like she's speaking directly to us. <sighs> what we did back then. Not so much as a day passes when I don't think about it. About what was done to us. All in the name of a ceremony. The purpose of which we were never even told. As Sovereign, they linked Elfin's consciousness to Lenigus itself. The Renis Alma was intended to control his power, lest anything should slip through its cracks. That day, as Maiden, my role was to temper his power. I was meant to guide it forth, and give shape to the strength inside of him. Link to Lenigus itself? But then, everything that's been happening... But that power showed me a vision. A vision of Oblivion. When I realized that vision was a prophecy of the apocalypse we were about to unleash, I couldn't go through with it. But without a maiden, the ceremony was doomed. Alphen lashed out, his consciousness no longer his own. I did what I could. Using my abilities as the maiden, I tried to seal that power away inside of me. But it was too late. Lanigus had already been brought to its knees. Thousands upon thousands of lives so cruelly snuffed out. All because of me. Because of what I had done. With the destructive force now slumbering inside of me, I knew I had to find a way to dispose of it. Anything to make up for my failure. But I didn't know how. Especially since that power was astral energy itself. In which case, ironically enough, the Renis Alma seemed to be my best bet. That, at least, would hold the astral energy dormant. Assuming that no malevolent third party got to it first. With the Sovereign and Maiden's combined power, Perhaps I could shift the chaotic energy inside me into the Renis Alma instead. That's what I hoped, but alas, it was not to be. The Renis Alma was lost, and Alfin the Sovereign was in a starship bound for Dana. My only choice was to seal away the destructive force inside of me using my powers as the Maiden, to buy the world what little time I could. The time needed for a new Renis Alma to be crafted, and for a new Sovereign to appear. Even if by doing so, it meant I would be passing the curse onto my descendants as well. Please, forgive me. I never meant to burden the future world with this threat too. I only wish that there was something more I could have done. Wait, you can't just... Naori. <sighs> that message just now, was it directly from Naori? Or was it the Danon voice speaking through her? What? These are the clothes that Naori and I wore during the ceremony three centuries ago. So you're saying this is the Maiden's outfit? That's right. These clothes are designed to resonate with the Sovereign and Maiden's abilities. They focus and enhance them. And they appeared now because... Naori must have left them here for the new Sovereign and Maiden knowing the day would come when they would need them in their fight against the Thorns. 
These outfits are directly linked to the answers we've been chasing this whole time. If they're here, it must mean it was Naori's will for us to find those answers as well. Locating the Renis Alma would allow us to neutralize the dark astral energy inside Xion, thereby silencing her thorns. Is that what Naori's suggesting? It makes sense. After all, Master Cores and Spirit Vessels are both able to prevent the astral energy inside them from developing sentience. By that logic, it would stand to reason that the Renis Alma would have the same ability on a larger scale. We have a Maiden and Sovereign. Now all we need is the Renis Alma, and we'll finally be able to free you of your thorns. Shion. It's possible? You really think so? I do. We can rid you of your thorns and stop the world from falling to oblivion. However, the spirit channeling ceremony already failed once. Even if our goal is different this time, we can't be sure the same thing won't happen again. We should take care not to be too optimistic. You're right. It's the barest sliver of a chance. But if there's even the slightest hope it can work, I'm willing to stake everything I've got on it. I... I know it's too early to let myself feel relieved, but... I just can't seem to help it. Just hearing there's the slightest chance, even though I know the world's still in great peril. It's selfish of me, I know, but... but still... No, it isn't! You found hope to believe in. It'd be strange if you weren't over the moon about it. Rinwell's right. We can rid you of your curse and still save the world at the same time. Thank you. Naori entrusted us with the fate of all humanity. Now, it's up to us to prove that trust was well placed. Starting with a little game called Hunt the Renis Alma. Yeah, we've come all this way. Now we just need to search Lenigus and Rena until we find it. Yeah, we can protect the world and save Xion at the same time. I too shall lend my services. My knowledge of Renan lore is bound to be a useful asset. And they say modesty is dead. <laughs> Miracles just seem to follow wherever you go, huh? How do you know it's me they're following? We're all in this together, Xion. You included. Now let's get moving, shall we? Last I heard, we had an apocalypse to stop. <laughs> Thank you, Naori. So Naori sealed away the power that made me lose control of myself. She stopped my rampage, and saved my life. But then, that power she'd sealed away was passed down to you. I'm so sorry, Xion. It's my fault that you're cursed. You're wrong. What happened to you was because of the ceremony, and Naori's attempt to stop Oblivion. You paid a heavy price for it, and then fell asleep for 300 years. The reason you lost your memories... Is the reason for your curse. The, the thorns. thorns. It all leads back to them. But once they're gone, we can finally put an end to all this. When my thorns are gone, I never dared to dream that such a thing could be possible. No, the truth is, I think maybe I've always been dreaming about a life without my thorns. The touch of my family, or playing with my friends, holding hands with Rinwell, or giving Law a deserved smack. Embracing everyone, all the normal things that people do together. I always wished I could experience them for myself and finally know what they were like. Is it really okay for me to believe it can happen? I'm so scared of getting my hopes up. What if it doesn't work out in the end and... That's not going to happen. I'm here to make sure it won't. Forget fate or destiny or anything else. We're going to live! A normal life. There are a lot of things you still want to do, right? Yeah, you're right. It's such a strange feeling. 
I know that we've still got plenty of fighting up ahead. And it's for my sake. So I can live. You're worth fighting for. I believe you, Alfin. Good. I'll keep on fighting. For as long as it takes. Until our future is finally in our hands. Sounds like this Naori chick had quite the big heart. Her position demanded nothing less, from the sound of things. She didn't focus on differences, least of all those between Renans and Danans. Yeah. It was Naori who first showed me that such a thing was even possible. And then she saved my life by sending me back home to Dana. Not only that, but she willingly stayed behind on Lenigus for the sake of her people. It sounds like she was quite the hero, all right. A truly caring person. That's as if walls meant nothing to her. The ones separating the Renans from the Danans, or herself from others. She had no need for them. Which basically meant that she never had anything to break down in the first place, huh? Yeah. I think you may be right about that. You inherited that legacy. Her wish for the world. Don't I know it? She's kind of like a lodestar guiding our way. Showing us what we can aspire to.